All right. Some of you, for quarter three, this is your project that you'll be doing. It's called an A to Z fact book. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, let me walk you through exactly how this will look. And I've got an example one set up here, so let me present it so you guys can see it. I'll end up having to take it down because i got to walk you through exactly how to do it. So for, you're just going to basically create a slideshow uh, for it. So the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to make all of your slides with your letters on them. You can adjust them as needed later. But for example, the first thing I start with is John Adams. Okay, now if you'll, if you'll take note, the A goes with the A that starts with his last name. Okay, I could have done, if I wanted to do J, I could have done J for his first name. Okay, this is important. You can't just pick a letter in his name somewhere. Like, I can't do John Adams and then highlight M. Like, that doesn't work. You're not doing that. Okay, so please, please, please stick to either the beginning letter of the first name or the beginning letter of the last name. Okay? And then you'll underline, lots of people miss this every year, you'll underline the term, the term is John Adams, underline it in the second, or in the sentences that are right. You need to write a minimum of two sentences. I don't need more, I don't need five sentences, but I need a minimum of two. Okay, if you don't do two, you're not going to get the full <clears throat> amount of points for it. So just some basic information. John Adams was the second president of the United States. He's known for passing the Alien and Sedition Act that was met with much resistance from political opponents. That's all I need to write for him. Okay, and then I find a picture online of John Adams. I plug it in, but then I cite my picture. So at the very end of your presentation, you're going to have a picture citation page. It'll probably end up being more than one. But for example, A was the John Adams, so I would go and I'd cite the picture and then I'd put the citation that kicks out from EasyBib to me. I'd put that citation right in there for A. Now, let me show you how some of this works. So, do a new slide. Okay, I can insert word art. I want to use, next is going to be B, because that comes next. So I hit B, and then look, B shows up for me. And then I can move it wherever I want. I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, if that's too hard for you, if I go and hit Control-C, I come back over here, Control-V. Okay, and then I can double tap, and it'll come up and ask me, and then I can change it, B. Okay, and then it's the same size as the A was on the first slide. I don't have to make a change then. Okay, and I can drag it wherever. I don't always have to have it over here. I can have it in the center. I can have it way over here. I can put it down here. Okay, wherever. But the thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to have a bubbled letter, the term right here, and then two, sen two sentences and a picture on each slide. So it's not overly difficult. Is it a little time consuming? Yes. Is it overly difficult to do? Absolutely not. Like everybody can do this. So <clears throat> here you go. If we'd be in class, we'd be using the books for the most part um, <clears throat> and doing chat or be in chapters five through seven. You'll create a fact for each letter of the alphabet concerning the term you use to present that letter. So the requirements for each letter of the alphabet, locate a unique fact that has some significant to do with one of the terms. And I'll sh give you the terms that you are, are allowed to use. So like I said, minimum of two sentences. You can go to three or four. Four might be pushing it, but at least two. <clears throat> Make sure the information you put in the sentences is detailed and factual. So get to the point with your information. Okay. That's a decent one for John Adams. He was the second president. Good to know. And he was also well known for passing the Alien and Sedition Act that was met with much resistance from political opponents. Another good thing to know about John Adams. Could I have done maybe one more sentence of something? Sure. Is that enough? Absolutely. 
and it's good detailed factual information. Okay, you need to provide a picture, like I said, and you're only allowed to use each term once. So I can't use John Adams for J, like I said. I can't use him again. I've used him, he's in the A section, it's done, it's over with, I need to pick somebody else for J or something else, doesn't have to be a person. And then, like I said, make a citation for each digital picture that I include. Okay, so there shouldn't be any plagiarism in regards to the information because you're literally just going to read the information on the internet and then you're going to reword it in your own words. Okay, if there is plagiarism, you'll lose points for it. But there shouldn't be because you're only using two sentences. So put it in your own words, like really good practice here for summarizing information. Okay, so your terms, and if we go to the terms, you'll see I have page numbers listed for you, but you don't have a book, so it's not that important anyway. So you're going to be looking up any of these online. So like I said, for J, if I wanted to go to J, I could do J's treaty. That would be a J. But my next letter in the alphabet after A is B. So I do Battle of New Orleans, Bear Flag Revolt, Cotton Belt, because the B is right there. Um, I could do Brigham Young. I would save that one for the Y, because there's not many Ys out there. You could do him for, young, for Y, since his last name starts with the Y. Um, just in looking, uh, I can't find any more for B. So you've got a couple different ones you could use for B. Okay, so you might have to, if you get to a point where you're like, oh, shoot, I, I used this one twice, or I can't find anything for this. Like, XYZ is commonly used for the XYZ affair. Use it for X, because X is right there. If you want a Z, use Zebulon Pike. If you're looking for a Q, call Quakers. So I made sure that you have, there's a few of them, that you're kind of limited to, you're only going to be able to use this one specific person or thing. However, the rest of them, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of different things that you could do and do some research on and find pictures for. Okay. And the pictures, you need to make sure go with what your term is. Okay. So please make sure that they go with it. Uh, you will each <clears throat> be given. Yours won't say example. Yours will say A to Z fact book. You'll get a slide show that's already uh, created. I think I even put the slides in there, not the bubbled letters, but I gave you the slides, all 26 for the letters and a title slide and one for, so you have 28 slides to start. Obviously, you'll add more to it when you add more citations, uh, but you have a title slide, the 26 letters, your picture, citation, pages at the bottom. And that's really it. Uh, this is not, like I said, it's not something that's super complicated. Lots of times students do tend to try to overcomplicate this, but please don't. It's super easy. This should be easy for you. You will have checkpoints, I forgot to tell you. Uh, and in your uh, information that you'll be given, you'll see the deadline, your first deadline, A, B, C, D, and E, is January 22nd. And these are the things I'm checking. You do all those things, I can give you a full check on each of them, you get 20 points. If you meet the deadline, you get an extra credit. You get extra three points if you have all five on this deadline. If you're missing one, you didn't meet the deadline. You missed one. So you don't get the three bonus points. Now, if you meet all of your deadlines on time, right here, I will add five extra credit points to the score. If you're meeting all five of your deadlines on time and you get the full amount of points, that's 109 out of 104. Because I'll give you the five points extra credit. Okay, so again, this will go in as a percent. So whatever that percent is out of 104, that's what will go into the grade book. Okay, but you need to make sure you pay attention to these deadlines on each. We've got two in January, two in February, and a final one in March, which is the final six. Okay, so that'll be 24 points, that last one. Okay, that's basically it. As long as you stay up to par, up to speed on the deadlines with this assignment, this project, 
you'll be good. You'll have no issues. You may, you might miss a few, a half a point here and there, but that's not going to be a killer when it comes to, you just aren't meeting the deadline. You just aren't doing it. It's 30% of your grade. Easy peasy. Make sure you're doing it. We'll see you.